Now, I've been using my Apple Notes for a long time now. I use it for things like to-do lists, reminders, shopping, and more recently, I keep a video ideas list and I use it to write my scripts. Most normal people have one or two emails. I have nine. 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 Don't ask. Now, I don't have all of them on in notes, and before this video, I had one on. One folder with over a hundred notes. It's a mess. Then I found a few videos showing off the real power of this app, and I was blown away. Whoa. So in this video, I'm gonna show you just how powerful this app has become, and the best part is, of course, it's free. If you found this video by it being suggested, I do all things related to Apple. The good, the bad, and well, the ugly. If that sounds like your thing, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss my next video. Thank you. Now, starting with the basics real fast, if this is the first time you're using the app, once you have the app open on the bottom right side, you're gonna go ahead and start a brand new note. Now, the first line is your titled and it's defaulted to a large bold text. Once you hit return, it's gonna go ahead and move to a much smaller version. Now, if you aren't much of a typer like myself, you do have the option to do speech to text. This is on the bottom right of the screen. Now this function has changed in iOS 16. It has a lot of potential, but it's still getting there. To make sure the full access is set, what you're gonna need to do is go into your settings. Then from there, you're gonna tap on general. Then you're gonna scroll down the keyboard and tap that. Once you're in your keyboard, you're going to scroll down to the dictation section and you're going to make sure that enable dictation and auto punctuation are on. Now the auto punctuation is supposed to add, well, punctuation as you're speaking. In my opinion, it's hit or miss. So here's a quick example of me doing a voice recording to the intro of this very video. Sometimes it looks like one long run on sentence. Other times it adds the punctuation, hence why I said hit or miss. Now what does work is it lets you add emojis by saying the emoji. For example, you see the fire emoji or the poop emoji. I'm not sure how useful it is, but there you go. Hopefully it gets better. Now where the notes app is becoming really powerful is the ability to make a quick note in other apps, but you have to add it to your control center. To do that, you're gonna simply go into settings, scroll down to your control center and tap on that, then add specifically quick note to your panel. Once set up, you have the ability to make a note in certain apps. For example, if I'm on Google or Safari looking at an article and I want to swipe down from the top right corner to do my control center, I select Quick Note. It will open a Quick Note and automatically add the link to the site I'm on at the top. Now you can add more if you want to, but you can also type your thought and once you hit save, you now created a quick note tab on the main page of your notes app. Now the amount of apps this can work in is solely limited by the developers. Now oddly enough, the actual Twitter app doesn't work, but the third party app Tweetbot lets you save links to tweets. Another app that is well worth what I paid. Now one app I hope actually adds us to it is the YouTube app that would make finding video topics a game changer. Now some other little known features in the app is the ability to create rows and columns now this is above the keyboard on the left and you can add the column. Tap on the three dots and it will open up a full menu which allows you to do other links like delete or add rows, format which lets you add text to the row or tap the three dots above that and then you can adjust the column. Now it doesn't really do more than that right now. I don't use it for anything but if Apple were to add formulas I think it would be really cool for some like quick stats spreadsheets I can share around. Next to the column setup is the text feature. This will allow you to adjust the look to the text on a bunch of different levels as you can see here. Below that is the option to add bullet, dash, or number points. Once you have made the selection, then you have the ability to do an indent that formats for subtext. Now this is pretty powerful if you think about it and allows you to keep notes clean and organized. Something I didn't know till I was actually making this video. It's so much better. Next to that is the function to add a checklist, something I use a lot of. Now, another little known feature to this is you can actually sort checked items. To go and do that, jump into your settings, scroll down to the notes app, then scroll down to the viewing section, and you'll look for the sorted checked items. In here, you can actually choose to have checked items on the list move to the bottom, leaving the incomplete ones at the top. Now, this is a preference, 
I have it moved to the bottom so I don't miss a task because I have missed them when I have it left a manual. Never again. Now back on the app, next to that checklist is the camera icon. This function is actually pretty cool. It will allow you to add a photo or video from your phone to the note. Scan a document's next to that, which is exactly what you think. You can actually have it scan a paper, a file, or whatever it is, and add it to your notes. Yes, you could take a picture, but this is much cleaner and will not include anything around it. Now, if you miss something or it was too wide, you could tap on the photo and it'll open up another menu, which lets you add more files, readjust the crop on the photo. Tap on the open dot to select which color you want the file to be in. This is pretty neat if you have a specific way that you want to present that particular scan. Next, you can take a photo or video and have it added right to the notes. Then there's scan text, which actually just lets you take the text of a file and transfer it to the type file in the notes. Now last is the marking function. You can mark up a picture, a text file, etc., and you can pick which pencil style you want to use. Now once you do that, you're going to go ahead and tap on the pencil and you can actually select the thickness and color density of that pencil. Once you've created your note, there is a really cool thing you can do which will allow you to find this note again if you really aren't the type to create folders, which is totally fine. In your note, you can make a hashtag that will allow you to be able to search for notes by that hashtag. Extremely helpful if you can't find something. Now for my scripts, I'll do the hashtag scripts. This way, if I don't put something in a folder, all I have to do is open up my app, swipe down the bring to search, I can tap on the bar, then it opens up a whole suggested list of options. I can search by hashtag, or tap on hashtags and every note that used one will come up. As you can see, there is a bunch of other options as well. Tags will help you find anything, no matter what folder it's in. Now at the top of your note, you have a couple options. First, there's the share, which has been updated as well. You have the choice if you wanna do a collab or just send a copy. Now, if you wanna have someone be able to make changes to the note, you have the ability to do so. It's a really cool feature and something that a lot of people pay for to have in other apps. And right below that, you can make limits to the note. Who can access only invited people or anyone with a link, permissions, and you can make changes just to view. You can also decide if you want those invited to be able to invite other people as well. Now, once you send the note off and the person accepts, you can open that note and it can now look at the activity and changes that were made to that note since you shared it. You can message, call, or video chat with that group. Any updates not seen, show activity to see what was done, or show highlights of what was done in that note. Last, you can manage the note and make any changes or even stop sharing the note. On the far right is an icon with three dots, or people who are way more educated than me, refer to them as ellipsis. Learn something new every day. Once you're in here, you have another place to go for a scan. You can pin a note, or you can lock the note for privacy. The lock is actually a pretty cool feature and has been updated by Apple to use so many more ways to access it. You can now use the code that you already used to get into your phone, which will also allow you to use face or fingerprint ID to unlock. Next, if you want to find in a note by keyword search, move a note, which I'll cover in a second, add grid lines. Honestly, I, I never use this. Maybe someone out there who does, go ahead and leave a comment down below and let me know if you use this. Next, you can change the background from white to black for easier reading. And last, of course, you can delete the note. If you accidentally delete a note, no worries. On your main folder page, you can see recently deleted. Tap and you can actually hold it to move it back to where it was. Or delete it forever to where you can't get it back. Now let's go ahead and organize my front page a bit and show you some more of the features that I was talking about. Now, as you can see, I have a lot of work to do to clean this up. I did create a YouTube folder and any general notes I can place in there. Now, to create a folder, you simply tap on the folder plus icon on the bottom left corner, give the folder a name, and you're done. Now, if you notice down below that, there's make into a smart folder. I'll cover that in a minute. Now, once that's done, your folder will be added to the list. Now, if you have any current notes that you want to move over to that, you can search for them, and when you find it, you're going to go ahead and simply tap and hold on that, and then another little menu will open up. This will allow you to pin the note if it's something that you want to keep at the top, lock the note quickly from here, share, or move. Now you can also add a subfolder to the main one as well. In my YouTube folder, I have two subfolders right now, 
and you can open up that list by tapping on the little arrow to the right. Now, as you can see, I have two indented folders. To add more, you're simply gonna create a new folder, give it a title, tap done, now this will appear in your list. Next thing you wanna do is tap and hold on that folder like I showed you, and you're gonna select move. Can you see where this is going? Then you can select the folder you wanna move it to. In this example, I'm adding it to my YouTube folder. Now it's added to the YouTube sub list. It's getting better in here already. So let's talk a little bit about that move feature. As you can see, it's really easy to tap and hold on a note, or click the ellipsis in a specific note to select a move. Now this is something I'm gonna be spending a lot of time doing after this video. Now for the smart folders. This isn't something new to the Notes app, but let's be honest, most of us never used it before, and it's actually getting a lot better. If you have used this in the past, go ahead and drop a comment down and let me know if there's anything that you would like to see Apple change or add to this feature. I haven't used it much, but I will be because it's really powerful. So go ahead and tap and create your folder in the bottom left. Once you put your title in, you're gonna go ahead and tap Smart Folder. Then this will open up a whole other menu that will allow you to set rules for that folder. At the top of your notes, you can select all or any to the filters. Once you've decided that criteria that you want for this specific folder, now select what it's going to be used for most. The first one is tags. As you can see, any tag, any selected tag, all selected tags, or no tags. You'll have to see what works best for you and whatever it is that you're setting it up for. The next option you can see is when the note was created and edited. This can even go back and move older notes that you may have missed while organizing. Now this can get really specific to what exactly you want to be included in that folder. Now keep in mind, that first choice you make at the top is what really determines how the rest of this is gonna go. Now I'm gonna set up my YouTube folder and subfolders with this to see if I don't have to remember to actually put them in there because yes, I, I will forget. Don't forget, this app is free and I never knew it was this powerful. Did you? Go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. If you were surprised by any of this, go ahead and check out my video I did on top five iOS features that you need to see. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and you have a great day.